walk down the street with these two ears, we hear sound in a spherical environment. So it's surround. It's all around us. I mean, we, we have location. We know this is back, but to the right a little bit. Our senses are able to detect where things are in a three-dimensional space. And yet, with recordings, we only listen to stereo, left and right. So it's actually on a two-dimensional space. It's unnatural. <laughs> it's unnatural. Herbie first uh, was interested in doing surround shows in the late 80s, early 90s. He said he tried a show in, I believe it was Quad in 4Channel, and the results weren't very good. So he kind of decided to go away from it for a little while. Someone had told him that, you know, I think the guys at Meyer Sound are doing some pretty cool stuff with surround sound and spatialization. You should check out what they have going on. So at some point we had Herbie here at the Pearson Theater and we did some experiments with him and played around with multi-channel surround and spun sounds around for him and we were lucky enough to have the time and we had the cooperation of Stanford that they were going to let us set up such a extensive system that they had not really had before in a show like that. To the average person, surround sound is something that you get in movies primarily with sound effects. But usually the music is not so much in surround. So they're kind of freaked out with the idea of actually hearing music in surround. John Myers and, and his newest technology gave us the opportunity to use newer algorithms, newer, more evolved system for making surround sound. And it's moved far beyond uh, uh, anything that I could have imagined back then. So, so, the, so every seat is a sweet spot now. Sitting at the keyboard, I get to hear the music in surround because the drummer is kind of behind me to the left and the bass player is sort of further up on the left and the guitar player is on the left of the... I mean, I get a sense of it being on stage and it's exciting and exhilarating for me. With our technology, with something like Space Map, we're able to do surround sound in really a large number of surround channels. We're not limited to a 5.1 or 7.1 format. At the Bing, we use 28 channels of surround. So imagine a ring of speakers going around the audience and 28 individual speakers. We're able to address any one of those speakers by sending signal to them. But what's cool about Space Map is we can pan those around in real time. I like being an early adopter because I'm attracted to the idea of taking chances. <laughs> and it, it, I guess it's connected to what we do in jazz. You know, we're constantly taking chances because we don't know what we're going to play in the next moment until that moment gets there. To me, it's very stimulating. And its discovery is exhilarating. At the same time, you learn a lot when you are an early adopter. I set up a series on a multi-touch surface, similar to an iPad. I set up multiple movements that Herbie was able to control. So basically when I say multiple movements, he could take any one of his sounds and send it through one of the space maps. And I had up to six that he could control and he could send individual sounds that he wanted to move around and he could actually take that sound on the control surface and move it around. My interest in surround sound has been a part of me for quite some time now and I'm, I'm glad I'm getting a chance to begin to ex experience this now and, and bring this to the public. Mm -hmm.